gotta leave your money behind you Raise your hand to the sky That's the masses of silence Welcome back to Give Me Some Truth. Uh, you may recognize my voice. I'm Keith Ponywas, financial advisor here at Wachner Condon from the International Podcast. I'm joined in the booth with a reluctant <laughs> podcast guest. Uh, this is our first time on a podcast yeah, together. Yeah, it is. That's right. Uh, Miss Polly Price, who's a financial advisor here, um, but also has kind of a, a unique background for a financial advisor. I think, uh, you know, we're a little more accustomed to unique backgrounds for financial advisors on the on the international team side, you know, with a, a lawyer and a uh, 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 me, a former French professor, and Sill, a uh, Swiss and French, you know, world world traveler. Um, but you came into the financial advising industry from kind of charitable giving side yep. of things. Uh, why don't you explain a little bit about that kind of background yep. in, in, in that world? Yeah, so I had about almost a decade of experience working um, in, cha- in the charitable giving space. Um, I worked for the Rotary Foundation out of Evanston, Illinois, um, for about three years. And, I mean, that organization is just huge and it's international and they do a lot of great work. And, um, I mean, just the teams I worked with in it in and of itself. So um, I wasn't specific to, like, the plan giving side of that um, of the Rotary Foundation, but we worked a lot with our plan giving team. So I started picking up on kind of the estate planning side of things and an interest kind of sparked in me from there. And then when I m- we moved to Madison, I started working with PBS Wisconsin, formerly Wisconsin Public Television, um, and I worked on their plan giving team there. So we worked a lot with donors who left, you know, a bequest within their state plan. They, you know, gave qualified charitable distributions every year, et cetera, et cetera. And donor advised funds were a big part of that and seem to be growing more and more in popularity. Um, so this is an interesting topic to me because I'm, I'm enjoying learning more about them. And so because as financial advisors, we're not terribly creative people. Naturally, we've just kind of made Polly <laughs> be our expert on all things charitable giving. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, myself on the international side, donor advised funds are one of the things as well that we've worked with clients uh, to, to set up and, and use as we'll kind of get into uh, more details on the po- podcast. And I think donor advised funds operate in a, in a good space for a lot of people. Um, you know, highly wealthy people may look at setting up a charitable trust. Um, you know, in the, I think of PBS and I always think of like, is it the Pew Charitable Trust? Yeah. Yeah. There's a uh, that always <laughs> appears after yep, everybody a, yeah. knows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, after that, um, so a a charitable trust, that sort of thing, um, is, is expensive to administer, requires a lot of capital. Mm -hmm. Giving an annual donation, you know, a little bit easier, but one of the things that's happened is the tax code has changed, Mm -hmm. um, in that we now have a higher, uh, kind of standard deduction for Americans. And so a married couple, Filing jointly, it's about 25000 give or take, is the mm-hmm. standard charitable deduction. So a lot of people don't itemize their taxes, or what they do is itemize their taxes every couple of years where there are just situations that arise. And so this is a space where I think the donor-advised fund works really well. So before we kind of get into the, the uses, Polly, you know a little bit about the kind of origins of the donor advised fund and, and that sort of thing. Um, in your experience with it, you know, it's become more popular. Was there anything that you saw beyond the changes in the tax code that, that led to the popularity? Yeah. Um, I think there, there has been more of a push within the charitable giving community in, you know, letting donors know of the option of a donor advised fund. Um, I didn't really dig into, like, the history and how long they've been available through, like, larger brokerage firms like Schwab and Fidelity, et cetera. Um, but, like, even here in Wisconsin, we have Madison Community Foundation, which has been around since, I'd say, the 40s. Um, I could be wrong on that. But um, so I think it's just more of a, a, a general marketing push because because of what you said, because of 
it's not a family foundation where a private foundation where, you know, it takes a lot of overhead and administration costs, et cetera. It's easy to set up um, a lot of donor advised funds, depending on the fund sponsor, there might not be any minimum, you know, mm-hmm. in order to set it up. Some places do. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, there's tax benefits, which we can get into. And then they're just very flexible. You don't have to know right away which organization you want to give to. You can change your mind. You can give to multiple organizations. So I, I think that flexibility is a big, is important. Um, I was reading somewhere that, um, I think it was in this um, the 2022 Donor Advised Fund report by uh, the National Philanthropic Trust, and they were saying that you know giving overall basically since 2020 is kind of on a decline, um, but that the donor advised fund model is taking up more of a space within that. So I think, you know, pushing that a little bit more will provide benefits to that area of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I think, so they really first came to my attention in the, the wake of the passage of the tax law that raised, Mm -hmm. I can't remember if that was, I think that was 2018. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and at the end of that year, the, the year where um, basically the itemized, you know, fewer people were going to be itemized, itemizing deductions. And it was a big source of concern in the charitable kind of giving community. It's like all of a sudden this tax deduction may go away. Are people going to be less philanthropic because of that? And so the donor advised fund became kind of one way around that. Um, you, you identified a couple of things, you know, um, kind of the tax advantages um, and then how they can function for you. Before we get to those two, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about how they work. You I'm know, they're, say, yeah, we haven't actually talked about what a donor yeah, advised fund exactly. is yet. Sorry, uh, no, no, no. Uh, we're only nine, yeah, ten fine. minutes into the podcast. <laughs> um, basically, you know, to, to give you an idea, a donor advised fund is either organized by a brokerage house or there are certain um, charitable organizations that put them together, and this is a case as well. Um, for um, international clients, one place that we see it, there are what are called dual registered uh, donor advised funds in the UK in particular, in the US, Mm -hmm. which allows the donation to be charitably deducted both in the US and in the UK. But basically you put money or stock or something else into this fund. Whatever you put in becomes cash, Mm -hmm. uh, essentially. And... Charles Schwab or whomever at, at a lower level will basically give you a menu of investment options to pick, pick among. Um, and you can put it in the S and P 500, you know, that those sorts of things. It generally they're, you know, if you do it through Schwab, Schwab is going to give you Schwab products. Right. If you do it through fidelity, they'll give you fidelity products, but it allows you to basically create a portfolio that will rise and fall with the market. Um, the only part of it that is deductible, you know, just by way of, of uh, guidance is that initial contribution. You don't get to deduct the gains and yeah. <laughs> those sorts of things. But what the gains allow, you put that money in and, you know, at, over time, the gains in that account allow you to provide more charitable donations. And so you could set it up so that the dividends from the funds in the charitable, you know, tr- the charitable uh, fund go the donor advised fund go out to your charities you can set it up so that five percent of it every year you can set it up so it clears out every year and so generally what we see is it's funded with a larger donation right than you might fund a, a, a normal charitable gift with yeah for sure because there this isn't the only you know charitable giving vehicle that people can utilize there's a you know, a myriad of choices available to donors, and this is just one of them. Um, But this one is important because of a couple things that you mentioned, obviously the tax benefits, and even if, um, you know, they're not, or even if a donor isn't necessarily reaping the benefit of the, um, the the tax deduction that year on their income taxes, if you've held this asset or the assets that you're donating for over a year, you can, or you're avoiding capital gains tax on Mm -hmm. those assets. So that's, you know, a pretty important thing that can be a benefit to, you know, most anyone. 
Um, and, and as well, one of the things that it can work for too is, you know, at a place like Schwab or Fidelity or wherever, or one of these bigger funds is they can sometimes help you with odd assets mm-hmm. that might not be yeah, that's a great point. publicly traded or hard to value or hard to get rid of or that sort of thing that you can then donate into the donor advised fund. So one place where you may see it is somebody has an either publicly traded or privately traded company stock, right? That's appreciated. Um, and so, you know, say, because I like round m- numbers, right? Mm-hmm. You have this, uh, you know, stock of Google that you bought back in 1995 or you had as a stock grant. It was, you know, worth a, a penny when you got it and it's now worth 100000 right? Um, you can basically put that $100,000 into, obviously there are limits on how much you can deduct and yep. so on, but you can put that 100000 into a donor-advised fund and receive a tax deduction for that full amount that you put in there. And then for charitable giving purposes, diversify your portfolio, that it's yeah. not just the Google stock. Now, yeah. one other thing that people will do is rather than putting it into a donor advised fund, they may give it directly to the charity. But what this allows is you to maybe space out your donations, spread your donations, do kind of you know planned over time giving, that sort of thing as well. And, and so, you know, one insight, and we're talking about how they're used and the tax deductibility at the same time, but it allows for you to kind of develop a plan yeah, in exactly. some sense. And to your point on the plan, a benefit of the donor advised fund as well is you can designate succession planning on those funds. So, I mean, for instance, at Schwab, you have the option of, you know, choosing a successor. So they'll be able to direct grants like on your behalf after you've passed away. Um, but you can also you know, make designations in terms of like if once you've passed away, if I just want, you know, the remaining of the fund to just be distributed to these five charities or this one charity, um, that's a possibility. There's also other options if you don't know what you want to do. There's options within, you know, depending on the fund sponsor. They might have options in terms of like where you want to, where you're able to put the funds there. So they could, you know, they might have their own charitable funds that would just, you know, kind of absorb Mm -hmm. that fund in and of itself. So, yeah, there's a bunch of options, and that's, you know, it kind of separates it out from your general estate planning in a way, where if you have, you know, this separate fund, that can be beneficial. Um, but that's another part of it, too, is any gifts made to a donor advised fund are irrevocable. So once it's gone, it's gone. It's in yep. the fund, which is, you know, that's the purpose of it. You're, you know, you're gifting it. So, um, but just something to, you know, for donors and clients to be aware of is the fact that, like, you can't you can't get that back and it's a little bit different than just donating appreciated stock. Yep. And and so one thing here that I just want to touch on in in specific to donating and then, you know, we'll talk a little bit about how it functions and how the giving works. Mm -hmm. I want to just talk quickly on like the tax benefits. So, you know, I think there are a couple of times when a donor advised fund might be particularly tax advantageous. Um, Maybe in the years leading up to retirement, you're in a higher income bracket, right? And then you want to continue your charitable donations after you retire. You want to get the most bang for your your charitable buck, so Mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, you can put it in in this era where you're earning more money, get a higher tax deduction, and then, you know, let the money continue to grow and you can continue to make charitable donations after you retire from that standpoint. It'll lower your your taxes in a prime earning year. Similarly, if you have a big income year, either through a bonus or a stock option or something like that at work, it becomes a good idea maybe to do it during that year, right? Where you have this big liquidity event, either sale of business or something like that, that becomes a good time to move that money in. Because again, you're donating it at your highest tax era. And that's the other... Then the, the final way that we see it is, is for people who may not, like I said at the beginning, itemize every year, right? They may itemize every other year or every third year. And so you want to do ongoing charitable donations, but you don't itemize your taxes every year. So, you know, you may not get the, the savings. So from a financial planning perspective, moving everything in in one year makes a lot of sense. Did I miss any tax 
ideas. No, there. I'm just kind of curious because I know I remember when I was at um, Rotary, it was interesting because I was like I said, it's an international organization. The Rotary Foundation is huge. Um, the foundation was way bigger, obviously, in the United States just because of membership in general, but also because of the fact that the United States has more incentives for charitable giving. That's not so much the case if you're in, like, Switzerland or Sweden. Yep. You know, other places, you know, around the world are vary in different ways. But um, so a lot of this pertains to people who file income taxes yep. in the United States. Um, so just something to... Yeah, and so from the international side of the, the tax question, there are a couple of things. First, as I pointed out, um, on the, you know, a lot of countries... Um, in their in your state planning, um, a lot of countries will allow um, if you donate money in after you die to remove that from your children's taxable estate uh, or from your taxable estate. Um, yeah, but a lot of countries don't incentivize in quite the same way um, the the tax things. The UK is one that does, so that's why we see the kind of dual registered. Uh, investment advisor funds, where we see them being advantageous is for those of our clients who are resident in maybe jurisdictions with lower tax rates than the United States or very similar tax rates um, or ha who have still U.S. source income that they have to pay tax on in the U.S. but not in their country of residence. That becomes a, another kind of way to, to work around that. Um, but the other kind of advantage of it in, in this sense is how it functions, I think. Um, so yeah, you may not get the local tax advantages, but if you are a net U.S. taxpayer, great way. The other thing is for those clients of ours that are planning to move abroad, um, particularly in that year before you go, you may sell your house, you may sell assets, you may have a big income year that year, and so that becomes a way of reducing that U.S. income uh, before you go. So there are, there are a number of kind of strategies involved in that. One of the other reasons is how it functions. So the the donor advised fund itself is a five hundred one c three, yep, which is the tax deductible part of the the tax code. They then give to charitable organizations, and in certain cases, depending on the charitable organization, they may need to. It may not be in their database. They need to screen it. But one of the things that it allows is you to donate to organizations around the world. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Rotary has its domestic arm and its international arm. You know, you have a lot of charities will have a U.S. base, mm -hmm. even if they do international operations, but in certain cases they may not, right? And so we, we've seen it with certain cases of people putting together schools or charitable schools you know, and if you're going to do a larger <coughs> donation from a donor advised fund to a local school, there may be some vetting to make sure that it's not a, a tax dodge, mm -hmm. you know, or, a, or a, a scam. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you may have to pay a fee for that, but you can then donate to a specific school from this donor advised fund in, a, you know, in Africa, in Europe, wherever, via this, this donor advised fund and, you know, kind of give out charitable money in that way, having already reaped the, the tax deduction yeah. on the U.S. side, which is, I think, somewhat important. Um, and especially if you're structuring around a, a big liquidity event, maybe a, a good use of it. So that's one of the, the differences. But for domestic folks, if you're donating to a U.S. charity, if you move abroad and you have U.S. charities that you want to keep giving to, it's, it's, from my understanding, pretty easy. You know, you've worked on both sides of it. Pretty easy process, right? Yeah, yeah. And speaking of that, like working on both sides of it, I just want to encourage people to, if they are interested in doing this, to reach out to the organization that they want to support. That's maybe I should back up. That's step two. Step one, research the organization you want to support. There are, you know, Handful Step zero, of, we always say, is talk to your financial advisor. Yes, yes, Paula. yes, yes. <laughs> Absolutely talk to a tax professional, talk to your financial advisor, make sure this is the right option for you, make sure it's the right timing for you. Um, but I also want you to encourage people to reach out to the organization, find out more about it. Also, though that organization, you know, depending on the size of your gift, depending on where you're going, even if it's not dependent on the size of your gift, they want to know you. They want to talk to you. They want to know who their donors are. Why? Because they want to figure out why people are giving so that they can encourage 
more people to give. They can kind of, you know, play into that and that will help them grow their organization, do more good. You can also direct gifts to certain funds within the organization. So do you want to make sure that your dollars are going to like an unrestricted fund and that they can just be spent on whatever? Or are you really specific with how you want your giving? So it's important to reach out to the organization at the very least, look at their website, see if there's, you know, something of interest. They have more than likely, depending on, you know, the size of the organization, they have a team who wants to talk to you, wants to help you. There's also benefits to the donor. You know, there are, depending on the organization, there's going to be engagement events that might, you know, really interest you and or donor recognition opportunities, you know, that's not of interest to everybody, but just something to consider. So that's my two cents. Yeah, no, I think that you, you raise a very good point because one of the things with donor advised funds is they can be as uh, personal or anonymous as you'd like. I don't know what the opposite of anonymous would be. Um, but, you know, you can, from a donor advised fund, if mm-hmm. you send a check, there are instructions that you can, okay, we want it from the donor yep. advised fund. We want it from our family. We want it anonymous. Yep. You can do any number of things. We want it from the donor advised fund in honor of so-and-so. Mm-hmm. And so those kind of levels of personalization are things that I think, um, that yeah, the fun- that you should know going into it. But yeah, the foundation wants to know, why are you giving this gift in honor of so-and-so? Oh, you know, that was, and and it helps them as well, as you said, grow their organization, but also tell their story um, in terms of what they're doing for people and telling that story to the people they're helping as well. Hey, this is, or to volunteers, you know, oh, you know, we got this to help volunteer training from a woman who was a longtime volunteer or, you know man who was a longtime volunteer in their honor. So I think there are a number of, of things that can buy, you know, thinking about how you're giving this gift and being thoughtful about it can help the organization, yeah, in raising more funds, but yeah. also in doing their job yep, better absolutely. as well. So I think that that's very important. Yeah. You're the expert here, Polly. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there anything we've missed in terms of talking about donor advised funds that, well, that you know, you think ah, we should... You know. No, I think, you know, there's a bunch of information about them just because they're growing in popularity. And so, you know, I encourage anyone to just do a quick search on whatever browser they prefer. <laughs> um, but we are, you know, kind of the end of the last quarter of the year here, getting close to that December 31st deadline. So, you know, that's a big deadline for charitable giving. And depending on what you're giving, that deadline might be a little bit earlier, like I think like actual physical stock certificates. Yep. I think those have to be postmarked like in November. <laughs> so it's just something for people to consider at the end of the year as they're considering that as whether they're holiday giving or, you know, yeah. tax planning. All you, you dug out, uh, you know, you found mom's, uh, grandmom's yeah. uh, stock certificates no. buried away in her in her safe and yeah. you got to do something with them. Yeah. Um, a very good idea to, to figure that out. But yeah. yeah, there are time deadlines, you know, donate donation deadlines, deadlines within the donor advised funds. You know, because they, uh, in some certain cases, you know, they're literally mailing out a check to the yep. organization. So you don't want to save it to the last minute, you know, if you're trying to get it for, for this year. Yep. Um, but uh, uh, thank you, Polly. Yeah, I'm glad we were one. able to finally do a podcast together. Yeah, and uh, I agree. Um, you know, good time. And hopefully all of you found it informative. And uh, if you have questions, as always, you know, feel free to reach out to either Polly or myself or your financial advisor. And in honor of my international colleague, Stan Farmer, please uh, feel free to subscribe and smash the like button. Don't just touch it. You have to smash it. So thank you for listening and, and have a good day. Walkner Cotton Financial Advisors is a registered investment advisor with the SEC. Registration with the SEC does not imply a certain level of skill or training. The opinions expressed by the participants of this podcast are their own and do not reflect the opinions of Walkner Cotton Financial Advisors. All statements and opinions expressed are based upon information considered reliable, although it should not be relied upon as such. Any statements or opinions are subject to change without notice. Information presented is for educational purposes only and does not intend to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities, investments, 
or investment strategies. Investments involve risk and unless otherwise stated are not guaranteed. Information expressed does not take into account your specific situation or objectives and is not intended as recommendations appropriate for any individual. Listeners are encouraged to seek advice from a qualified tax, legal, or investment advisor to determine whether any information presented may be suitable for their specific situation. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. Thanks for listening, and for further information, please visit walknercondon.com.